Good morning, good morning, good morning, hallelujah. <clears throat> this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us rejoice and be glad about it. For the Lord our God is a strong tower. Hallelujah. Come on in, people of God. Good morning, Myra. Good to see you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. God is so faithful, y'all. Hallelujah. Good morning, Monique. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, Evangelist Erica. Hallelujah. God is so good, y'all. He is so amazing. Hey, glory. Hallelujah. Blessings, woman of God. It's good to see y'all tuning in this morning. Hallelujah. Hey, the wind of God. This is one of my new favorite songs. It's called Wind of God by Bashan Mitchell. Wind of God, hallelujah, it's blowing in your direction. Hallelujah, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome, someone said they're a first time or welcome to the Makeover Ministry. I'm Apostle Julia, good to see you this morning. Welcome to the Makeover Ministry family. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord our God is so good. Yes, God. When the wind of God blows in your direction. Hallelujah. God is so good. He is so amazing. Hallelujah. He is faithful. I'm sorry. My phone ain't needed. Give me a second. Yes, God. When the wind of God gets involved, things got to blow out of the way. Come on. Glory. Things got to blow out of place and blow in place all at the same time. Come on. Glory. The wind of God is blowing in your direction. Hallelujah. Glory. God is so faithful. He is so amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. Can you feel the wind? Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. The wind is blowing. Glory. And I feel breakthrough. Come on. Glory. When the wind of God gets involved, my God, things can't be the same. Come on. If you think about a windy day, my God, hallelujah, and the leaves just start rustling around. Come on. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, God. I feel the wind. Hallelujah. Glory. God is so good. Hallelujah. Come on. Hey, glory. He's so amazing. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you for the win. Hey. Thank you for the win. Come on. Thank you for the win. Hey. Come on. Hallelujah. You got to learn how to be grateful for the win. Hey. Hallelujah. See, sometimes we don't like the wind because it blow our hair out of place. Come on. Hallelujah. But this wind is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, oh God. I love God. He's good to us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Mm. Yes. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever I need. It's coming my way. That's the part that blesses me. Come on. Whatever I need. Come on. It's in line and it's moving in my direction. Come on. It's coming my way. Just hold tight. Everything you need. Come on. It's on the way. Glory. Hold tight. Hold tight. My God. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes. Whatever I need, it's moving around. Come on. It's lining up. Come on. It's getting in position. Glory. Hallelujah. We thank him for the win on today. We thank him for the win on today. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Be not discouraged. Be not dismayed. Hallelujah. Come on. See, he is still the God who is still yet to come. Come on. So it's still on the way. Come on. It's still on the way. Hallelujah. I love God. Come on. Listen, the very thing that you have been believing God for is in the works. Come on. It's in the works. My God, hold tight. Be still. Come on. And know that I am God. Hallelujah. Come on. Be not discouraged. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on. I love God, y'all. He is so amazing. Thank him for the win. Hallelujah. Glory. Whatever I need. I love God, y'all. He's so amazing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's coming your way. It's on the way. It's on the way. It's getting in position. The right people are being lined up. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Be not discouraged. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for another opportunity to just bless your name. We thank you for another opportunity to just worship you on today. Thank you, Lord, for health and strength. And thank you for another opportunity to see with our eyes and hear with our ears on today, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, oh God. Thank you, God, for our children waking up in their right mind. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help us to understand every problem that is laid before us this day is only an opportunity for you to show yourself strong. Hallelujah. But this is the day that you have made, orchestrated, and designed with us in mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. Hey, hallelujah. God is so faithful. Now, have y'all been tuning in for the women's tour? We had a blessed time on last night. Our word was, I wasn't always like this. I wasn't always like this. Hey, my God, because many times people see us in our broken state. And they just figure out, they just figure that that's how you've always been. But everybody who you see in a in a broken place, my God, they weren't always like that. Come on. Uh, every man wasn't always abusive. Come on. Every man wasn't always uh, uh, rude to his children. My God, every woman was not always a gold digger and hard hearted. Come on. But I wasn't always like this. So you can catch that on our YouTube channel. Uh, the message is called, I wasn't always like this. And our YouTube channel is called makeover ministry. We're makeover ministry on all platforms. So hallelujah. Um, we're glad for all our first time listeners that are tuning in this morning. Good morning, Ashara. I love you little woman of God. Hallelujah. The Lord is so good. He is so amazing. Um, let's get into our word on today. This has been in my spirit for a couple of weeks now. Um, hallelujah. Erica, can you pin the uh, YouTube channel or post it on um, TikTok? Uh, so, what'd you say? Facebook, right? No, on, on TikTok. Somebody just asked on TikTok. Oh. Um, all right. So, this has been in my spirit for a while now. Um. And our message today is called Too Close to Correct. Too Close to Correct. Too Close to Correct. Sometimes um, people are in our life and we can give a word to everybody else. 
<laughs> and we can uh we can we can do all these other things we can say what the lord said to a complete stranger we can say thus said the lord come on to but sometime when people are close in our inner circle we're shy First of all, the word of God says a prophet is without honor in his own hometown. So when you have received so much um, persecution from within the family, from those who are close to you, when they don't take you serious, uh, the things that you're talking about now, when God gives you a word or a situation comes up, it's like, I don't even want to go talk to that person. Sometimes people are too close to correct. Mm. My God, help us, Holy Ghost. Um, let's go to 1 Samuel on today. Because even though some people are hard to correct, we still have to do our part because we're going to be held accountable. We're going to be held accountable. And I get it. I promise you, I'm with you. I get it because the Bible says, do not throw your pearls to swine. And so sometimes it's like, I don't even want to say nothing to them. I'd just rather not come on. Or I've said something to them, but they're not receiving it. Hmm, my God. So I don't want to waste my breath. Jesus, too close to correct my God. But you see them going down a wrong path. My God. And then the children of today, they have this saying and they say, I, they say, I just want to figure it out myself. Just let me do my own. Let me make my own mistakes. You made your mistakes, child, and that almost cost me my life. OK, sometimes you're trying to save somebody from the very thing that they're going through or they're going down. But we have to understand that even in those times, as a prophet, as one who speaks from God, not you have to put yourself in a different position. You're not giving the word as their parent. You're not giving the word um as 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 their friend but you're giving the word as uh the woman of god or the man of god and you will be held accountable and no matter how much good morning simeon you were on my mind just this morning i pray all is well with you i have to check in with you later today if possible um but the mailman no matter how much you complain about how much the light bill is and the whatever, no matter if you check the mail or not, the mailman still has to deliver the mail or they get fired. <sighs> My God. Our word today is too close to correct. Let's go to first Samuel and we're going to start in the second. No, we're going to start at the 12th chapter, the 12th chapter. Now, the sons of Eli were scoundrels who had no respect for the Lord or for their duties as priests. Whenever anyone offered a sacrifice, Eli's sons would send over a servant with a three-pronged fork. While the meat of the sacrifice the meat of the sacrifice animal was still boiling while the while the holy thing was happening. Let me let me let me help us. While the holy thing was happening, while the meat of the sacrifice was still boiling, the servant would stick the fork into the pot and demand whatever it brought up to be given to Eli and his sons. All the Israelites who came to worship at Shiloh were treated this way. Sometimes the servant would come even before the animal's fat had been burned on the altar. He would demand raw meat before it had been boiled so it could be used for roasting. The man offering the sacrifice might reply, take as much as you want, but the fat must be burned first. Then the servant would demand, no, give it to me now or I'll take it by force. So the sin of these young men was very serious in the Lord's sight, for they treated the Lord's offerings with contempt. Hmm. Too close to correct is our word on today. Who was that 
1 Samuel 2 and 12 through 17. Sometimes people are too close to correct. And not only are they too close to correct, but the sin and the thing that they are doing against God is so awful that you know it's bringing judgment upon them. Now, I just don't believe that Eli did not know because we know what our children are doing. Hmm. And we have this very situation going on in the church. And it might not be the pastor's natural children, but some of the spiritual children. Come on. You know they, they're, they're, they're living a lifestyle that's not pleasing to God, but you still letting them get up and lead worship. You still letting them get up and pray. You still letting them get up and lay hands. My God, you have not rebuked them. You have not said anything about it. My God, come on. Because we let our heart get in the way. Hmm. We let our loyalty, my God, get in the way. And so we have become more loyal to people than we are to God. It's dangerous. We're tired of being persecuted. We're tired of being talked about. We don't want, we just talked about that yesterday. Our message was, I can't help it. And we talked about how Jeremiah said, listen, I got to keep preaching this gospel. It's something in me that makes me preach. It's something in me that, that just comes out. It's something in me that just, he said, I'm getting mocked for this thing. Even my friends is waiting for me to fall. Come on. But it's still something in me that compels me. To preach the gospel and to tell the truth. Let's go to verse 22. 1 Samuel 2 and 22. Now Eli was very old, but he was aware. Mm, come on now. We got We have to understand. Eli was old, but he was aware of what his sons were doing to the people of Israel. He knew, for instance, that his sons were seducing the young women who assisted at the entrance of the tabernacle. Mm. My God, help us, Holy Ghost. Eli said to them, I have been hearing reports from all the people about the wicked things you are doing. Why do you keep sinning? You must stop, my sons. The reports I hear among the Lord's people are not good. Come on. If someone sins against another person, God can mediate for the guilty party. But if someone sins against the Lord, who will intercede? But Eli's sons wouldn't listen to their father. For the Lord was already planning to put them to death. Now, the thing that I find so interesting in this passage of scripture is that he could have set his sons down. But this is what's happening in a lot of churches because they're gifted, because they're, uh, because they're, they're in such a state where the church is dependent on their tithe. The church is depending on their, uh, their, their skill, their talent, their anointing to flow in the house of God. Now we got a situation where we're not setting down people that are not doing what it is that them to do. Come on. We're not sitting down people uh, who are living sin cycles, not one who fall, who, who had a fall, one who actually made a lifestyle out of the fall. We're not sitting them down. They're still doing all the wrong things, but because they sang good, because they pay tithes, come on, because they, they drive the van, because they teach the Sunday school, because we're short staffed, because people are scared to come to church. My God, come on. We're not even sitting down people who are not doing what it is that God has called them to do. Wait a minute. Let me see if I can find this scripture that just to mind. See, we got to get, we have to actually do it God's way because it's God's house. We have to actually do it God's way because it's God's house. But we're, we're so busy worrying about the feelings of people. And because the people of God are so persecuted and we've been so persecuted, we're so busy trying to make the world feel comfortable. We don't want nobody to say we're mean. We don't want nobody to say nothing about how we're doing things. But at the end of the day, is God please. Hmm. Give me a second. Let me find this scripture. Because I know it's in Corinthians. Mm. 
All right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 5. Because I need us to understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 5. We'll start at verse 1 and just read down. I can hardly believe the report about the sexual immorality going on among you. Something that even pagans don't do. Come on. I'm told that a man in your church is living in sin. Come on. With his stepmother. You are so proud of yourselves, but you should be mourning in sorrow and shame. And you should remove this man from your fellowship. This is Bible. I'm not saying it. Come on. Even though I am not with you in person, I am with you in spirit. And as though I... And as though I were there, I have already passed judgment on this man in the name of the Lord Jesus. You must call a meeting of the church. I will be present with you in spirit and so will the power of the Lord Jesus. Then you must throw this man out. We ain't doing that. We got so much sexual sin running rampant in the church. Ain't nobody putting nobody out of church. Come on. No. We got the gay choir directors, the fornicating preachers. Come on. We got the masturbating people. Come on. And I mean, we, we've got these things that are running rampant and people are still being able to operate in a holy place. Hmm. My God, we're in 1 Corinthians 5. We started at verse 1. We're on verse 5. Then you must throw this man out and hand him over to Satan. Come on. So that his sinful nature will be destroyed. It's for his good. Come on. Hey, my God. And he will be saved on the day of the Lord. So what the word of God is telling us is as long as we keep condoning it, my God, the sin can't overtake them. Come on. I'm not going to keep praying for you and you keep putting yourself in that situation. You're not going to keep pulling on my anointing. I need you to pray for me because I got this, you know, I done got this disease and I got this situation going on and I got this going on. Okay, we're going to pray for you the first time, but we're not going to keep on praying for you about the very same thing. We're not going to keep doing that. The word of God says, put them out. This is Bible. Put them out. Come on. Put them out of position, at least. Put them out so that they can be quit condoning it. Quit going along with it because it's when our consequences catch up. See, this is the thing about people. The lessons that you won't learn in by words, the lessons that you won't learn by word, my God, you will learn by consequence. Oh, yes, you will learn by consequence, but we're not willing to do this very thing. The word of God says, put them out, turn them over to Satan, quit rescuing them. Come on, come on, quit rescuing them from the, the hard part because this is the thing. Then you must throw that man out, hand him over to Satan so that his sinful nature will be destroyed. We keep putting a cushion, his sinful nature won't be destroyed. If we keep rescuing our children from those things when they get themselves in a, that sinful, that rebellion won't be destroyed. Hey. Come on, help us, Holy Ghost. We have to understand that we're, some people have become, in our heart, too close to correct. They pe they've become in our heart. We're so loyal. We don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. We don't want to be called mean. We don't want to be talked about. We don't want. This is why you got to learn how to be talked about. So what? We get the opportunity every day. We have to learn to grow up. You, you're, because we're going to have to give an account. The Lord does not allow you to see the thing so that nothing is done about it. And then many of us, we become very cowardly and we say, you know, I'm just going to pray about it. I ain't going to say nothing. Or I heard this one. I hear this all the time. Come on. Uh, I'm just going to pray about it, you know, because they don't listen. No way. I don't care if they don't listen. I want what you will not say 
is that you have been in my company and you have been in my presence and you have not heard the word of the Lord. Oh, I'm going to say what God, you don't have to like it. We can lose friendship over that thing. My God, come on. Because on judgment day, my God, come on. You're going to say, you know what? I thank God that apostle Julia said that. I didn't like it when she said it. She made me angry. I cussed her out. My God, come on. But she told the truth. As parents, we have to stop letting a Jezebel spirit put a bridle on our tongue. Jezebel comes to silence the prophet. The Jezebel spirit is so overpowering that it will make you shut up. It will make you retreat. You better ask God for that Jehu anointing. Because Jehu was anointed to kill Jezebel and Ahab. Help us, Holy Ghost. The word of God says, throw them out. Throw them out. And let me keep reading. Your boasting about this is terrible. Don't you realize that this sin is like a little yeast that spreads through the whole batch. Get rid of the old yeast by removing this wicked person from among you. This is Bible. It's Bible, y'all. It's Bible. So either we're going to live by this thing or we're not. See, this is the thing. When I got delivered, I went back to my pastor and I asked him, first of all, why you didn't say nothing? You let me lead the children's ministry. You let me lead the dance ministry, vacation Bible school, Sunday school, my own dance ministry. You let me do all this in the church. You never said anything. Never said anything. His response was, I just believe we'll all find our way one day. No, you are the watchman for my soul. You are the watchman for my soul. We have to give an account. Do not be at a church where there, there's no correction ever being given. That's not good. If the only message that the prophets are given is, is good messages, that I, child, everybody in here ain't living right. <laughs> hey, come on. Everybody in here ain't living right. My God, come on. Now, how in the world is Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Wednesday after Friday after Thursday? The only message, that's what these new prophets got going on. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Every message that you got is a message about God's going to bless you. Turn around three times. It's coming. It's on the way. It's a blessing coming your way. No, if you don't turn from your wicked ways, it's a burning hell waiting on you. Mm. Then you will be a fresh batch of dough made without yeast, which is what you really are. Listen, we have to understand this because when you let one sin slide, come on, then, then, then somebody else see, well, the choir director's gay. So this church is comfortable with gay. And then all the gays is coming. Come on. And then you got, then you got to say, oh, well, this church is comfortable. That's why you can look at the church and see what sin is on it. Just step in. When the church is overtaken by vanity, you walk in and everybody look like a fashion show. Come on. When a church is overtaken, uh, uh, whatever the spirit is, you can see it on the people. Because it's become comfortable. No one is corrected. I'm not talking about the pews. I'm talking about the pulpit. I'm talking about the leadership. <sighs> when the pastor got on skin tight clothes every Sunday, that's why the pews is dressed like that. Come on. When the first lady is dressed like a nightclub, that's why the pews are dressed like that. Come on. There is no correction in the house of God. When the church can only be motivated and encouraged, my God, come on. It is no longer a place, a house of God, a house of worship. It is no longer where the love of God is flowing because the word of God says, I, I chastise those I love. I chastise, I correct those who belong to me. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. 
Let me keep reading because I want us to understand what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the festival, the festival, not with the old bread of wickedness and evil, but the new bread of sincerity and truth. When I wrote to you before, I told you not to associate. This is Bible. Not to associate with people who indulge in sexual sin. But I wasn't talking about the unbelievers in sexual sin or are greedy or cheat people or worship idols. You would have to leave this world to avoid that. I meant you are not to associate with anyone who claims to be a believer yet indulges in sexual sin or is greedy or worships idols or is abusive or is a drunkard or is a cheat or cheat people don't even eat with such people. It's just the word of God. He said, I'm not talking about the world because we're called to be a light in dark place. I'm talking about the people of God. And I tell you, this is a real thing. And, and, and it really does work. Hear me, hear me, hear me, Zion. It works because someone who was very dear to me, who I loved very dearly. Come on in the room, people of God. Come on. She was a woman of God and she would babysit my kids. She told me, uh, she told me, she said every time she would babysit and I would ask her, can she babysit? And I would go to the nightclub. She said, girl, I would be in your house putting oil on everything that, that wasn't nailed down. Girl, your bed, your dresser, your shoes. She said, I told that spirit it was coming down in Jesus name. Come on. She said, I would go in there and I would just go in tongues. She said, I don't even know what the kids was doing. <laughs> Come on, but I thank God for her. But it was only so long that she kept on entertaining my God. She was babysitting for a purpose, but after she had established a boundary, my God, come on, in my home, then she backed off. There was a day that she, I'm her, I was her hairdresser, best hairdresser that ever combed her hair. She'll tell you it to this day. Come on. But there was a day where she said, I can no longer condone your sin. I love you, but I got to leave you. Matter of fact, I had just made her a wig that she had already paid for about $350 wig. And she said, I don't even want it. I said, but woman of God, you already paid for it. She said, I don't even want it. Come on. I said, well, come and get your wig. She said, I don't even want it. I'm trying to help somebody on today because this, this works. It hurt my feelings. It made me look at myself different. My God, come on. But because, and people don't like this. When a, when a child is, is gay, when a child is gay and the parents, they, they turn their back on them. People don't like it. They don't like it. Cause that's my baby, but we cannot always condone it. They got to feel the absence of your presence so that they can understand something. It's not right. The word of God says, turn them over. Take your hands off of that thing. Turn up since you want that so much. Come on and see this. I love. Let, let me. We go. We gonna bless God on today. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans because the Lord even did the same thing. Let's go to Romans chapter one. Chapter one. Romans chapter one and verse eighteen. Romans chapter one and verse eighteen. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness, who suppress the truth by the way they live. Okay, now let me take a pause real quick. Everybody on TikTok, I need y'all to start liking or subscribing, joining, whatever it's called, my backup page, because TikTok like to cut me off. They like to ban me. Come on. If they ban me, I'm on, I'm also live on um Instagram at Makeover Ministry. I'm also live on Facebook at Makeover Ministry. And you can always catch the full broadcast um on our Makeover Ministry YouTube page later. So let me say they blocked me yesterday because the truth is gonna get told on this page come on but Romans 18 and 1 but the but God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness 
not by their words. We got people that are speaking scripture. They they share Bible scripture. They sing. They preach. They pray. They prophesy. Prophesy. But the word of God says they suppress the truth by their wickedness, by the way they live. Mm. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the the earth and the sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes, they knew God. Come on. But they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. Come on. I need us to hear this. Come on. We're, we're, I'm in the NLT translation. They knew God. Come on. But they wouldn't worship him. Come on. Because the word of God says the true worshipers worship him in spirit and in truth. We just read that people are suppressing the truth by their wickedness. See, the Bible will tell you everything you need to know about it. It's its own book. Come on. It reveals its own self. Come on in the room. Hey. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give thanks to him as they began to think of and they began to think of foolish ideas of what God was like. And as a result, their minds became dark and confused, claiming to be wise. This new age, just this, this new age, come on. Claiming to be wise, God, I bless your name. They instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious ever living God, they worship idols made to look like mere people, birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desire. See, it's Bible. We have to understand this thing. Sometimes we're, we're so close up on people that we don't want to correct them. Our heart is so tidy. And, but baby, I'd rather you break my heart so that my soul can be saved. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desire. Even when this even comes to marriage, people want you to stay in marriages that are not godly, that are not holy, where the husband is not loving you like Christ loved the church, where the, where the, uh, where the, the wife is not submitted to God, uh, submitted to the husband as unto God. Come on. And so you want somebody to stay in ma- God abandoned people that didn't do right, but you forcing people to stay in marriages. That ain't God, y'all. If God abandoned, I'm only human. Help us, Holy Ghost. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their heart desired. And as a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's body. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped. And served the things God created instead of the creator himself. Come on, that's that new age. Come on, they're worshiping the crystals. They're burning sage. Come on, they're they're studying astrology. They talking about first minds and third minds and chakras and all. They're worshiping the things God created instead of worshiping the creator my god that's the problem when you want to know what's the problem with burning sage and crystals and new age and what's the problem none of those things are good they're all witchcraft but the problem with them is that we have put those things in the place of god you don't have to go to the moon to figure out what your life is getting ready to be my god go to the word of god you don't have to burn sage to get evil spirits out of your house the word of god says cast it out my god come on by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on. You don't have to have a crystal to be healed. My God. Pull on the blood. He said by your stripes, healing was made available. Come on. So we have to understand this thing correctly. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worship and serve the things God created and for himself who is worthy. 
who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. That is why God abandoned them. This is Bible. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Sometimes you got to let people go. You cannot keep supporting because your support is, is saying I'm in agreement with the sin. I'm not talking about when you first run up on a situation. I'm talking about we, I, I've shown you compassion, mercy, grace. I done prayed with you. I done loved on you. My God, come on. We done cast the devil out four times. Come on. and But you keep letting them back in. Now I have to abandon you because the word of God says it. I, can, I didn't make this up. Come on, we just read that in Corinthians. You have to turn them over to Satan and let them actually be devoured by that thing so that they can actually come to God. Stop rescuing people all the time. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other and the men instead of normal sexual relations with women burned with lust for each other men did shameful things with other men and as a result of this sin they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserve so why sexual immorality is always going to bring diseases, discomfort, mental illness. Because when we have sex out of covenant, we suffer in our body. My God, come on. The, the consequence, the penalty, the penalty that we deserve. <laughs> Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done if we preach like this people can get delivered more but because we're condoning it come on listen we talked about last night i wasn't always like this so we understand people get in situations but don't stay in that situation there's no need to come to christ and stay. i didn't never read where it says come to christ and stay as you are no he said be ye renewed by the transforming of your mind come on be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind i, I love god and all his children let's go back to second samuel our first samuel i'm sorry first samuel so Eli was telling his sons, y'all are doing all of this stuff and it is not right. Eli told him, let's start it. We're in second, uh, first Samuel chapter two, uh, verse 25. If someone sins against another person, God can mediate for the guilty party. But if someone sins against the Lord, who can intercede? But Eli's sons wouldn't listen to their father for the Lord was already planning to put them to death. Now, Eli was going to have to do a little more than talk. See, sometimes it's only so much talking you can do. You have to let your actions speak. Your actions have to say, Eli should have said, no, we, we're not doing this. So y'all going to have to, I don't know, go, so you got to get out. You can't, you can't keep handling the things of God with dirty hands. <laughs> My God. You can't keep handling the things of God with dirty hands. I love you. You my son. I love you. You mean the world to me. But I'm going to have to give an account. <laughs> but what I love about this story is that the other part that's so beautifully woven into this thing is because this Mm, I love God. He will always give us something. He will always give us something to keep going. If you, if you read this text, it talks about how Samuel grew up. Samuel's mother dropped him off in the presence, in the care of Eli. And, and the word of God says, meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew taller 
and grew in favor with the Lord and with people. So even though, even though Eli's natural sons was acting ignorant and cutting up, the Lord had already put somebody in place that Eli could, could pour into and grow and groom in the ways of the Lord. But he was so busy tolerating the foolishness, my God, from his natural children that he didn't even realize that God had given him a gift. Mm. 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 Oh my God. Let's go to verse 27. First Samuel 2 and 27. One day a man of God came to Eli and gave him this message from the Lord. See, after it's, so, it's only so much that the Lord's going to keep letting slide. That's why God sends prophets. That's why he sends prophets. Because listen, you're missing what the Lord is trying to be made known in this house. You're too close to correct. You love your members so much. You don't want to bring no correction. My God, come on. You love the things that they provide so much that if you bring correction, you know, they might cut out. They might not pay their tithes. They might stop coming. You don't want to look bad. I don't care. Come on. Because we got to stand before God. God one day. We've got to stand before the Lord one day. And we have too much sin running rampant in the church. One day a man of God came to Eli and gave him this message from the Lord. I have, I revealed myself to your ancestors. When they were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, I chose your ancestor Aaron from among all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer sacrifices on my altar, to burn incense and to wear the priestly vest as he served me. And I assigned the sacrificial offering to you priests. So why do you scorn my sacrifices and offering? Why do you give your sons more honor than you give me? <laughs> why do you give your sons? You're scared to talk to them. But you ain't scared to stand before me, my God, come on, knowing that I'm God, come on. You're afraid to stand before them and tell them the truth and put them out of their position. <laughs> Why do you give your sons more honor than you give me? For you and they have become fat from the best offerings of my people of Israel. And this is why the Bible will help you. It, it tells you this is why correction is not going for <laughs> my God. Come on, because the, those that are that are benefiting from it, even though Eli, he told him, you know what, sons, this ain't right. He still was eating the meat, too. He still was taking part in it, too. <laughs> he still was getting the benefits. Jesus. You and they have become fat from the best of my people, Israel. My God. This is the word of the Lord, y'all. Our word today is too close to correct. And after you, you, you can continue to condone the behavior. Now it's only so much that you're condoning before you start buying into it. You used to preach against homosexuality, but now that your son is gay. Hmm. Now that your son is gay, come on. Now you don't preach against it. Come on. So you went from preaching against it to now having pride parades at the on Sunday when it's when they, you know, we want to welcome all the pride people come in. We want to welcome we welcome you to come in and be transformed by the power of God. Hey, too close, too correct. It is our word on today. Verse 30, therefore, the Lord, the God of Israel says, I promise that the, that your branch of the tribe of Levi will always be my priest, but I will honor those who honor me and I will despise those who think lightly. Hey! 
Woo! I love the word of God on today. Come on. He said, I will honor those who, who, who honor me, but I will despise those who think lightly of me. We've been talking about this. Because some of us are thinking lightly of the Lord. Oh, that's just prophet. That's just apostle. Oh. Here she go on her yelling. I said one brown woman that be on her yelling all the time. I mean, I like her. She, you know, but, you know, I mean, I'm listening to partial of it. Come on. That's just mama. That's just that. Oh, that ain't nobody but my old Aunt Gertrude. That's all she do is preach. I'm so sick of hearing about that. My God. He said, I will despise those who think lightly of me. Who think lightly of me. The time is coming. Well, I will, when, when I will put an end to your family. So it will no longer serve as my priest. See, either you can sit them down or God can shut it down. Either way. Either way, you can sit it, sit them down, or God can shut the whole thing down. You choose. Mm. <sighs> My God, this is this is the word of the Lord, y'all. We at some point you gotta really take heed. All the members of your family will die before they time. See, your sin has consequences on other people. Oh, Jesus. He said, oh, wait a minute, some of them wasn't neat. They ain't even go to this church. But all of the members of your family will die before their time. None will reach old age. And you will watch with envy as I pour out pros uh, prosperity on the people of Israel. But no member of your family will ever live out their days. The few not cut from serving at my altar will survive, but only so that their eyes can go blind and their hearts break and their children will die a violent death. That's crazy. See, we, we, death is more spiritual than it is natural. I have really been processing it. Death is more spiritual than it ever has been natural. It ain't COVID that's taking people out. It ain't white on black crime. It ain't the police officers. My God, come on against the people. This thing is spiritual. It's some covenants that have been broken. It's some children who have been disobedient to their parents. My God, come on. And that is why death is in the land because sin is running rampant in the land. Death is more spiritual, my God, come on, than it ever has been natural. I gave the word back in November. The Lord told me, he said, when we cross over into 2022, there are some things that I have told people to stop doing. And if they do not stop, death is getting ready to sweep through the land. And I don't know about you, but all I've been seeing on my timeline is death. It's not by accident. It's not coincident. It is the word of the Lord becoming manifest. <laughs> Their children will die a violent death. Verse 34. And to prove that what I have said will come true, I will cause your two sons, Hopkins and Phineas, to die on the same day. Because you did not set them down, put them out, give them over to the things that they wanted. You let people keep playing church in the pulpit. Woo. Mm. You let them keep coming in with dirty hands. My God, I'm not talking about someone who is in process for real. I'm talking about for real. Some people are really being delivered. Come on. I'm talking about those that you know ain't even working on a deliverance process. Those that are willfully in sin cycles. Let's go over to chapter four. 
1 Samuel chapter 4 and verse 14. So now they had battle. We got a battle broke out in the land and Eli is, uh, Eli, his sons are out there fighting in the battle and somebody comes back to bring him the report. Verse 14. What is all the noise about, Eli asked. The messengers rushed over to Eli, who was at 98 years old and blind. He said to Eli, I have just come from the battlefield. I was there this very day. What happened? My son, Eli demanded, Israel has been defeated and the, by the Philistines. The messenger replied, the people have been slaughtered and your two sons, hey, your two sons, come on, Hophni and Phinehas were also killed. And the ark of God has been captured. And when the messenger mentioned what had happened to the ark of God, Eli fell backwards from his seat beside the gate. He broke his neck and died for he was old and overweight. He was old and overweight. He had become fat and complacent. Come on. That is so not good, y'all. That is so not good. That just speaks to so many different things. But the word of the Lord came to pass. Both of his sons died on the same day. See, sin, you might, sin does not go unpunished. Let me help us. Sin does not go unpunished. We are in a season where the Lord is repaying people. My God, come on. Thank it not strange that the people that have mishandled you. Come on. I'm Listen, I gave a word back in November. Also, the Lord told me that woe to those who have touched children and put their light out. Come on. Who have dulled their shine. Come on. Who have broken their spirit. My God. Come on. He said, vengeance is mine. Thus saith the Lord and my sword is out. Mm. My God. Come on. And so there are some people that mishandled you as a child. Maybe you were molested. Maybe you weren't molested. Maybe your spirit was broken. Maybe your heart was broken. Maybe you were treated harshly. You were talked to harshly. You were mishandled. You were abandoned. You were abused. My God. Come on. And trust and believe. Oh, yes. We are in a season where the Lord is repaying. He's repaying. We're in a season. The Lord is repaying. Vengeance is mine. Thus say it, the Lord. Sin does not go unpunished. Wash your robes. Wash your robes. Turn back to me and live, says the spirit of the Lord. Turn back to me and live. See, we have many people in nursing homes and we, we don't understand why. Oh, Mr. Johnson is so nice and uh, Miss Sally Mae is so kind. And I don't know why her family don't come see her. I don't know why she's just so broke down and the medicine ain't working. She just in pain. She But what you don't know, she put many kids' lights out. Come on. He may have put many children's lights out. My God. He may have been a heartbreaker. He might have been a molester. My God. He may have been an abuser. My God. Come on. His children may have seen him beat his wife. Come on. His Her children may have seen her abuse her husband and talk crazy to him and, and humiliate them. Come on. You have to pay. Everything that you do, you have to pay. I promise when I, when it settled in my heart for real, when it settled in my heart for real, y'all, you got to pay for everything you do. Every time you break somebody's heart, every time you lie to God, every time you lie to a person, every time you break a vow, every time you do what you said you wasn't going to do, every time you willingly, knowingfully sin, every time your eyes get caught in the crack of somebody's behind, every time you cuss somebody out, you have to reap what you have sown. 
And I heard somebody say, well, when you come to Jesus, you know, he wipes all of that out. So you're being extra. You know, he forgives you and he does. But them consequences is real. See, let's say you go out here and you make five kids before you come to Christ. When you come to Christ, you still got them five kids. Hey, my God, come on. The kids don't just poof, disappear. See, Paul persecuted Christians. Before he came to Christ. And after he came to Christ, didn't he spend a whole lot of time in jail? Because he still had to reap. See, the grace of God will be with you, but you still have to reap what you have sown. Be mindful. From this day forward, be mindful what you do. Be mindful, good morning, Brianna, what you say and how you handle God's people hey, be careful how you handling your kids you don't know who you're raising the word of god says touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm he said in the last days i'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh my sons and my daughters shall prophesy old men shall dream dreams and young men Ooh. shall see visions my god come on you better be careful i know they your kids and you birthed them but they his yeah he don't play about his babies and see, we're sometimes we get so caught up and we cussing at them, we're yelling at them, and we don't know we're breaking their spirit and they're going to school. That's why they can't function. You done cussed them out before they go to school. Come on. My God, and I know they get on your nerves, but you done got on God's nerves. If you ever look and see, they ain't nobody but you. They just you all over again. Come on. But be careful. Be careful. Be mindful. How you are handling these babies. Listen, you better ask God for more strength, more patience, more endurance. Come on. Come on. But some of it's your consequence for going to her having children out of wedlock. Let me help us. I got two kids. And I promise you, my daughter who was born in covenant, everything about her is different. Versus my son who was born out of covenant. My God, his struggles. It's, it's, a, it's, my God, come on. Listen, come on. Now his name is Bishop. It means man of God. Come on. All of those things. But because he was conceived outside of covenant, it's a little bit different. It's a little different. Come on. It's a little, his struggles. My God are different. Come on. He, the things I've had to walk through with him, they're a little different. My God, come on. With my daughter, my God, her heart is a little more obedient. It's a blessing to move within covenant. And see, the devil tricks us because sin is so quick. You know, you had that one night roll in the hay. It was good. You know, oh, you had your good lingerie, your tango ray. You had all of that stuff. But what you don't know is you got to raise that baby for 18 plus years with or without the man. Come on in the room and whatever come what may. You got to figure this thing out all by yourself. I'm trying to help us. Sometimes it's our consequences. We got we got teens out here having babies, getting pregnant, and then the grandmas is raising the kids. Stop raising these kids. That's why they keep going to make more. Let they consequence. No, I, well, I know. Well, mama, I got to go to school and I got to go work and I'm tired. I know, girl. Well, may the Lord be your strength. But because we keep rescuing them from the consequences, that is why you are a grandma seven times. Let them figure it out. God is with them. Listen, one thing I believe about God is that no one gives life besides the Lord. The devil can't give life. Come on. Because we got people out here trying to make babies for years and that it ain't happening. So when the Lord allows a life to come into the earth, he's God. Come on. He going to watch over fools and babies. Come on. But you have to be willing to let them go through by themselves. Come on, let because they're never going to go to God. They're going to cuss you out and get mad at you for a season, but they'll be back. Because I promise you, the first person, listen to me, Zion, the first person that I made my way to once I got delivered was the woman of God who walked out of my house and said she could no longer participate in my sin. Mm. I called her. I said, woman of God, I'm free. Mm. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. Hey, hallelujah. Come on. I love God and all his children. She said, I knew you was going to get free one day. She said, it hurt me. It hurt my heart to walk out of your life, but I had to do it. Jesus. 
She said, you like a niece to me. It hurt my heart. It crushed me to walk out of not only your life, but even your baby's lives. Crush me. Come on. Even my own mama, when I went home and I said, mama, I'm gay. My mama put all, I didn't understand it then, but I get it today. She said, I'm not going to be a part of it. She put, she even put the kids stuff. I said, mama, how they ain't gay. How you put that stuff out of your house? Cause she turned me over to that thing. But then she wasn't strong enough. Ask God for the strength to help you endure that season because she wasn't strong enough to endure cause she wanted to see her grandbabies. So she would be the very one that just turned right on and defeated the purpose, defeated the whole purpose. The word of God says we have made the word of God to no avail. Come on. Listen, she defeated the purpose and went right on back. Let me come right on back in. Baby said, while I went to the nightclub, baby said, while I was out on adventures with my girlfriends, come on. You have to learn how to let people's consequences. Because they're are consequences for condoning sin. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. God, you're so good. It's so amazing. And mighty are the works of your hand. If you have found yourself in a sin cycle, and you realize that you have found yourself in a place where you're not, if the Lord was to come back right now, are you ready to stand before him and give an account for everything that you have done, every deed done in the flesh? And every word spoken. If you are not ready, today is your day of surrender. Today is your day of surrender. Lord, I surrender. Create in me a clean heart. Renew in me a right spirit. Show me me. Show me what breaks your heart. Give me a desire for the things that you love. And teach me to hate what you hate. Today's my Change my name today, God. You change my name. Thank you, God. We come with repented hearts on today, God, asking for forgiveness of our sins of omission, our sins of commission. Help us not to live in sin cycles, nor should we condone sin cycles. Give us the courage and the strength to step back out of your way. Let you be God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Today's my day. Hmm. Hallelujah. You changed my name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, oh God. Your repentance is your deliverance. Many people say, I'm struggling with demonic spirits and I'm struggling. It starts with you repenting, turning. We can cast the devil out all day long, but if you keep opening the door, letting them back in. 
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for your word on today, God. Fill us with your Holy Ghost. Give us a fresh infilling, God. Thank you, Lord. Let that mind be in us that is in Christ Jesus. Wash our taste buds afresh today, God. Wash our feet. Wash our journey. The, the steam from the memories of our past. God. Transform us, not by power, not by might, but by your spirit. We offer a fresh surrender on today. Yes to your will, yes to your way. We want to be holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Whew. Hallelujah. My God. Whew. Help us, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, you're faithful. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God is so good, John. He's so amazing. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He's so good, y'all. He is so good. He is so amazing. He's so amazing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> My God. God is so faithful. Wow. <sighs> Hallelujah. Let's make that declaration, I'll never be the same. Never be the same. I'm not going to go back to sin cycles, and I'm not going to go back to condoning sin cycles either. Mm. Hallelujah, because there's consequences. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't care if it's mama. I don't care if it's daddy. I don't care if it's papa and grandma and them. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's righteous, it's righteous. The word of God says a tree is known by the fruit that it bears. Hallelujah. The Lord wanted Eli to know that he was not in right standing with him any longer. He even gave a message to Samuel, who was Eli's spiritual son. 1 Samuel 3. Verse 10. And the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, 
I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I am going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from the beginning to the end. I have warned him that judgment is coming upon his family because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. So I vowed that the sins of Eli and his sons will never be forgiven by sacrifice or offering. Samuel stayed in bed until morning. Then he got up and opened the door of the tabernacle as usual. He was afraid to tell Eli what the Lord had said to him. This thing got so bad that they had Eli had ignored the warnings of God so much. That the message had to now come from his spiritual son. Come on and let me help us. Cause it, it, and even in the natural, I remember one time I was having a, a fashion show at a big hotel and my daughter was walking around. She was reading the Bible and I, pro I promise y'all, it was like a movie scene. The music was playing. We had drinks. I had models everywhere, makeup artists, clothes. And it was like everything in the room froze. I will never, it was like the music even stopped in my mind. All of these, it was like the music even stopped. And she said, mama, I'm reading this Bible and it says because you gay we got to stone you because you have ignored the warnings of God his prophets the word now the children are speaking of now your children have to come and give you the word of God because you have ignored everything else but because they love you too close to correct Hey, my God, because they love you, they're afraid. They don't want to tell you. They don't want, you don't want to go tell your pastor. This is what God told me. I, I don't really want to say this. My God, come on. Hey, my God. I don't really want to tell my mama that. My God, come on. I don't really want to tell my auntie that. I don't want to tell my papa that. My God, come on. But this is what the Lord, he was afraid to tell the man of God what the Lord had said. But Eli called him out. Called out to him, Samuel, my son, here I am, Samuel replied. What did the Lord tell you? What did the Lord say to you? Tell me everything and may God strike you and even kill you if you had anything from me. Because in this, God reveals the heart of your leader, your parent, the one who said they love God. Because when you really love God, it don't matter who it comes from. It doesn't matter who it comes from. My God, come on. But his heart, even, even though his sons was cutting up and he was benefiting, the word of God even tells us that it was that when he saw that the ark of God was stolen, that's what made his heart break. Not that his children, because he knew that it was coming. But he told, he said, tell me everything God has told you. And they're not offended. Come on. Your mother's not offended. Your pastor's not offended. Your leader, your spiritual parents, they're not offended when their heart really desires to serve God. But when they get offended, it is now because another spirit has come in. What did the Lord say to you? Tell me everything and may God strike you and even kill you if you had anything from me. So Samuel told Eli everything. He didn't hold anything back. It is the will. It is the Lord's will. Eli replied, let him do what he thinks is best. See, that's how the reply is when your heart is really to God. I love God and all his children. Hallelujah. Our word today is too close to correct. I pray the word bless you and encourage you. I pray it strengthened you. I pray it brought some clarity and some deliverance to your life. If you want to sow into our word today, our cash app is dollar sign makeover ministry. We meet right here every day, Monday through Friday. If you're a first time visitor, we meet right here Monday through Friday, um, 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you say the makeover ministry has been a blessing to me and I want to uh, come in and I want to bless God and I want to enjoy the join in with you all every morning. I want to worship with you all every morning and, and hear from the Lord and I 
I want a partner. Don't just bring your ear, bring your seed. So we're asking you to sow a seed of $5 a day. That's $25 a week. We're asking you to be a partner so that the ministry can go forth and continue to do what it is that God wants to do through the hearts and the minds of our people. Because in these last days, only what you do for Christ shall last. All right. All right. So I love you. I'll be encouraged. Know that if God be for you, he is greater than the world against you. Um, I was reading out of first uh, Samuel. We were in chapter three. All right. Have a great day on purpose. Be encouraged. Know that if God be for you, he's greater than the world against you. And we will see you all tomorrow. I am Apostle Julia and you have tuned into the makeover ministry. Blessings and peace. <laughs>